Yeah, I'm not going to dance around this one. This is the best 2D platformer since Celeste. That's not some over-exaggeration. I'm not paid to praise this game like a big buffoon. It is just that good. I mean, more to chicken from the hit game. More to chicken on the PS1 is in here. That game sold like five copies worldwide. Pizza Tower is about a big chubby Italian man named Peppino Spaghetti. That, that's not a joke. Who owns a struggling pizzeria and one day some stupid pizza face threatens to shoot some big piss off laser at his pizzeria that's on top of a big tower so you climb that tower to stop him so you can pay off your loans and debt that's the story of this game it's so absurdly stupid and idiotic i i just love it the first thing that you notice when you start playing it is that the moveset is wild you can jump crawl slam your entire body on the ground dash mech run super mech run wall climb wall jump long jump slide roll dive turn around mid mech run shine spark which you can shoulder bash out of grab throw uppercut parry super parry and most importantly break dance now if you're a normal human being unlike me this sounds all very overwhelming and honestly at the start it kind of is you'll bump into every wall imaginable take damage from every single knight and pickle that likes to teleport into you but once you figure out how to chain it all together and maintain your speed pepino starts to feel like an actual madman a real italian you might say this is supposed to be a superior successor to wario land 4 but how the game rewards you for maintaining your speed reminds me a lot more of sonic if it was uh, you know actually good and the levels are designed in such a way that you want to do it in one fell swoop because of all the little mechanics it pushes into your face coin pictures pepino robots a golf mini game flying ladders surfing corpses cows that kick you grind this game even turns you into a pizza box at one point that you can flap around like Flappy Bird. It just has so many fun ideas that it uses to its fullest without making them feel overused. My favorite without a doubt is uh, Gustavo and Brick the Rat, which you first see fighting each other, but once you reach the third floor of the pizza tower, you see that they made up and then you get to actually play as them and you figure out that they have their entire own moveset, which is as complicated as Pepino's one and one of the moves is just Kicking the rats, look at this. Look, Gustavo's just kicking the rats, he's just abuse. Each level is also presented as a cartoon episode with his own charisma and theme. And all of them start off with this little cart. This isn't Super Mario 3D World where the levels are grass, desert, ice, and lava, okay? This shit is super lame. In Pizza Tower, you have such levels as Pizza Scape, which I'm pretty sure is a reference to RuneScape, Deep Dish 9, Peppy Bot Factory, Gnome Forest, Refresh. Refrigerator, refrigerator, freezerator, and my personal favorite, Don't Make a Sound, which is a straight up Freddy FNAF bear parody that includes funny jump scares. Every level has their own sets of mechanics, their own theming, and their own obstacles, and I swear, every single time you see something new, it is a blast to toy with, even something more tame like the golf mini game. When I first played with this, I didn't like it in the slightest, but then I figured out you can just, you, you can just bash your head into it like a madman and launch the golf ball to the other side of the room skipping the whole goddamn mini game it's great it's all about that beautiful fluid momentum by trying to avoid obstacles as much as possible and this definitely shines the most at the end because there is a big ass pillar named john pillar and if you attack him pizza time happens and the whole level starts falling down so you need to run back to the entrance as quickly as possible before you get harassed by pizza face <laughs> this part of the game is so much fun man you might think it is kind of lame to replay a level you just played backwards but pizza tower has a funky trick up its sleeve there are a handful of blocks scattered around the map that are called john blocks y yes that is their real name there are ones that are activated and ones that aren't and when you hit john pillar these blocks will swap with their counterpart making you follow a slightly different route back to the entrance and the levels are so meticulously designed that doing a pizza time feels like a straight up sugar rush sprinting through the level as quickly as possible i especially really like the pizza time and ref 
refrigerator, refrigerator, freezerator, which gives you a pepper pizza transformation at the end. So while you are playing the map normally, you see these ice blocks that you can't break. But once you get the pepper pizza and knock out John Pillar, you get to go through the level backwards again and melt all those blocks to make a new path. It's an extremely simple yet gratifying touch. And the whole game is filled with stuff like this. And then if you got some really red shiny balls, you have the cream de la crop going for that mesmerizing P rank. I've played a handful of games over the years at the SQ to do levels as efficiently as possible. I mean, most recently I said that Neon White was my favorite game of 2022, which is whole gimmick is that you play its levels as quickly as possible. You also have P ranks in Ultra Kill and Golden Strawberries in Celeste, uh, which are really demented, let's be real for a second. But going for a P rank in Pizza Tower is on another level, okay? So to get a P rank to begin with, you need to have one continuous combo streak from start to finish while completing all three secret rooms plus obtaining the secret treasure. And then you also need to do a second lap. What is a second lap, you might be asking? Well, once you complete at pizza, pizza time, time, a pizza portal will appear at the start of the level with lap two on it. And if you enter that, you need to redo the entire escape sequence over again. Only if you do all four of these things will you obtain a P rank. And I'm telling you, man, the dopamine that flows into your soul after finally seeing that P pop up in the left upper corner, there is no other feeling like it. And that song that is blasting through your headphones once you start a second lap, it goes hard as hell, man. This shit straight up rocks. So you might have noticed that like almost everything is pizza themed in this game. The Ninja Turtles are pizzas. The main antagonist is a pizza. The collectibles are pizza toppings. The goblins are pepperoni slices for crying out loud. Blood Sauce Dungeon has anchovy flying around. This grandpa is a pepper for some reason. The wizards are called pizzards. Let me repeat that. Hizzards. I mean, even one of the bosses is named The Noise, which is a straight-up parody of Domino's mascot, The Noid. It is also blatantly, ludicrously goofy, but at the same time charming as hell. It has mountains of personality. This game isn't just great because it is fun to play, but everything around it, it just oozes passion. When you play Pizza Tarot, you can just tell that the devs had fun making it. From the crazy animation to the top-tier level design, all of it is peak the whole package is so incredibly amazing it might be a little early to say this but this is going to be the best game of 2023 or you know if silk song decides to come out this year which it won't this game is probably still better so uh, take this silk song i never liked you anyway bye